Mr. Moon's Cadenza for the Red Crow. What courses through a man with a shadow for a face is a terrible enigma that is no longer his to keep. He wishes, he screams, he grips onto its every fiber. When the last hummingbird on earth tears it away from him, his olive oil slicked hands could not rip the hummingbird's beak off. Therefore, Mr. Sorrow must bid him adieu. A jester that rumbles the earth as the Himalayan salt volcano erupts. The heavy and rapid rush of salt froths the river of molasses and manic screams attracting a freckle-faced man within the fervent forest, who was uncertain of why he was there. A gnarly grackle chirps hoarsely. Hack! The man grunts with vinegar curling his tongue and pursing his beige peach high peaked correct lips. Fiddle farting with a stick so frail it had the same purpose as him. None. A nest of hornets buzz and screech. The screech mirrors his mystery. He never heard a screech sound like organized chaos, funneling through dripping trees and sticky, putrid bodies on the ground. He pants and chokes on his earthy saliva breaking small twigs and crushing critters as he runs misguided and half-blind. But serenity will never keep his freckles from shaking. He knows every step brings unpredictable change. His feet prune in his weathered and torn shoes made of swill, wormwood, and rock-hard clay. The tongue has grown porous black taste buds. Heat brimming from the midnight black river, cooks what is left of his shoes and tugs at his slipping freckles on his boiling and cracking porcelain skin, leaving his heart to sizzle as it juts out of his chest. A phantom sweeps his legs, sending his shoes into the lake. His heart sinks back down, scarred and frightened of the sound of feet going from prune to ghost chili pepper. Long black nails poke his chest as a cold yet scolding hot fist lifts him up. He grabs the hand and kicks furiously. He shouts, Let go of me! He hawked and hacked as his body wasted away. From the flesh-eating river, the faceless hollow devil dragged him viciously across. The devil drops him on the shadow-faced man, whom cries horseradish sour tears from the weight of the freckled-faced man. For a blood dry of color lilac-breasted roller knifes him hotly. The man shivers onto all fours, breathing sharply and blueberry-faced. As he stands, his body walnut cracks, tasting his fatigue and depression on his tongue. Leaving the boiling black river was easy, but enduring never-ending colorless, fruitless flatlands makes dry white beans seem rich and playful. He sighs, thinking of his mother's cooking, a thought that embraced old wounds, that created a chain of hiccuping pain sometimes multiplying in eardrum blisters, other times it cuts a new line collapsing him to the ground. His feet welcome warm gray sand, contrasted by a light and low breeze. With every step, he wheezes less, but no smile breaks through the shadow. The ground beneath his feet tremors, and his heart murmurs and squeezes the sky becomes a bleak sheet of concrete. He kneels 
to the ground. What was once flat is now a steep decline, tumbling him into a barrel roll until he finds himself flat on his back, not tired or broken, but held down by his morose anchor. A diamond root wraps around his knees, squeezing until his legs break, snapping louder than exploding logs. He hollers more painfully than a dying wolf. An odd chirp belts over and over again. He rolls over when he's no longer bounded, crawling up a steep hill with red tears, reciting the last words from his mother. Cry for love born from the earth. Cry for fear of losing those precious to you. Cry for nothing at all. Cry before your lips love soured and spoiled apples. He repeated this less and less, for the chirp became a caw, a charcoal thick bark oak tree, pulled the shadow off his face. A pink and weathered blue-eyed man could now be seen as he took off his hood. The oil in his coarse and curly brown hair exhaled. He flipped onto his back, pleased by the turquoise grass beneath the tree. Smell of lavender and mango numbed him from each internal stab. His lungs endured so fiercely, but he'd rather no pain than not know it at all. A red crow flew from the deepest parts of the tree, gently digging its claws into his wrinkly and frail skin. He hops from the man's belly button to his chest. Both look at the tree, reading the last word the man will ever read.